I go in this lecture we find out the radius of the circle. In the drawing we have the big semicircle. Inside the big semicircle we have two small semicircles and one circle. Our mission is to find out the radius of this circle. So we will define the relevant uh, points for the question here. This point will be defined as A. The center of this semicircle will be defined as B. The touching point of the two semicircles will be defined as C. The center of the biggest semicircle will be defined as O. The center of uh, this, uh, the smallest semicircle will be defined as D. The touching point of the smallest semicircle of the biggest semicircle will be defined as E. The center of uh, this circle will be defined as F. The touching point uh, of this semicircle with uh, the smallest semicircle will be defined as edge. It's a G. And the touching point of this circle with uh, this uh, semicircle will be defined as edge. And the touching point uh, of uh, this circle with the biggest semicircle will be defined as I. In the next step, we define the radius of the biggest semicircle. This, the biggest semicircle has capital R, and the radius of this circle is small r. Small r is the radius that you are looking for. You have to find out the radius of this uh, circle, small r. Actually, it is given us the question that line segment AC, this line segment, equals to 140 units and line segment CE equals to 70 units. Therefore, in total, line segment AE equals to 140 plus 70 units. So I write it down. Line segment AE equals to 140 plus 70 units. 140 plus 70 is 210. So I found out that AE, AE equals to 210 units. This line segment AE equals to 210 units. So, line segment AE 
Ти знаеш ли, те да е мета, обдавиха се ми срека. Андърхо, те да е мета, разстраиш с рог, е здравеш. Е ми хода ме шок, да ви ги файн, да редеш, обдавиха се ми срека, да скъпта на А. Андърхо, те да е мета, аз би хвам, че... Two times capital R. Okay, so two times capital R is the diameter of the biggest semicircle. And uh, it is also line segment AE. Okay, line segment AE is the diameter that is equal to one Ten units. A e equals to two hundred ten units. And from this equation, we will derive that two times capital R equals to two hundred ten units. We will divide this equation by two, and we get that R capital R equals to two hundred ten over two is hundred five units. Point O is the center of the bigger semicircle, point A is the point of the bigger semicircle itself, therefore AO is the radius of the bigger semicircle that they equal to capital R and capital R equals to other five units. Therefore AO, my segment AO equals to other five units. Likewise, We yeah, have point O is the center of the biggest semicircle, point E is the point of the biggest semicircle itself. That is exactly the definition of a radius. So O E is the radius of the biggest semicircle. That is equal to capital R and capital R equals to R at five units. According to what is given in the question, line segment AC equals to 140 units. But line segment AC is the diameter of this semicircle, and therefore the radius of this semicircle is equal to half of it, that is to say it is 140 over 2, that is 70 units. So AB, that is the radius of this semicircle, equals to 70 units in its length and the radius BC is also equal to 70 units in its length likewise it's given us the question that this line segment CE equals to 70 units but CE is the diameter of this smallest semicircle and therefore if the diameter equals to 70 units it means that the radius must be equal to half of it so the radius CD equals to 70 over 2 that is 35 units and the radius DE will be also equal to 35 units in its length the radius of the smallest semicircle. Okay. And what is the length of line segment OB? From the drawing, it is very easy to see that the length of this line segment OB it is equal to OA minus BA again OA minus BA equals to OB so it is OA minus BA I repeat again 
the mirror for plus minus OV equals to OA minus VA. So OV equals to OA is the radius of the biggest semicircle that is equal to capital R and capital R equals to other five units. So we substitute OA by other five units. Minus VA. VA is the radius of this semicircle that is equal to 70 units. So we substitute VA by 70 units. So it is average 5 minus 70 units. That is actually 35 units. In conclusion, if we know that OB equals to 35 units in its length, so we can write down here. Line segment OB or BO equals to 35 units in its length. And what is the length of this line segment? Line segment OC. From the domain, it is very easy to see that OC equals to OE minus CE. Again, OE minus CE equals to OC. So OC equals to OE minus CE. Repeat again. OC equals to OE minus CE. So OC equals to OE, OE is the radius of the biggest semicircle that is equal to 105 units, so we substitute OE by 105 minus CE. CE equals to 70 units, therefore we substitute CE by 70. In conclusion, we found out that Line segment OC equals to 105 minus 70, it is 35 units. Line segment OC equals to 35 units in its length. Okay, so I go to the moment. It's OC. Line segment OC equals to 35 units in its length. Step. I will present to you two new rules and we implement the two new rules in our drawing. We have rule number 10. Move it to rule number 10. If two circles are dotted each other internally, if the small circle, the small circle is located inside the big circle, and it touches the big circle at this point, point N. Point N is the point of tendency of the touching point between the two circles. And because of the fact that the small circle is located inside the big circle, we will say that the two circles are dotted each other internally at point N, then the straight line that connects the centers together, point O is the center of the big circle, point M is the point and is the center of the small circle, and therefore the straight line that connects the centers together is line segment OM. This straight line OM, turned into rule number 10, must pass for the touching point. That is to say, OM must pass from point N, therefore OMN is one side line. Again, OMN is one side line. And what is the length or what is the distance between the centers? The distance is OM. 
small r is the radius of the small circle, capital R is the radius of the big circle. So OM, from the drawing it is very easy to see that OM equals to NO, that is capital R, minus NM, that is small r. So OM, the distance between their centers, equals to capital R minus small r. Capital R minus small r is the difference between their radii. So whenever you have an internal rush between two circles, then the distance between their centers, in this case is OM, will be equal to the difference between their radii. In this case, it's capital R or small r. Okay, and also the straight line that connects their centers together, OM, must pass from point N, that is to say OMN is one side line. And we have also one number 11. According to one number 11, if two circles are touching each other externally, if none of the two circles are inside the other one, therefore it is defined here that the, those two circles are touching each other, each other externally at point N. Then the third line that connects their centers together, the center of the big circle is here at point O, the center of the small circle is at point M, and the third line that connects their centers together is OM. This third line OM must pass for their touching point, that is to say, must pass for point N, that is their touching point. O, o and M is one straight line. O and M is one straight line. And what is the length of O M or what is the distance between the centers? From the domain it is very easy to see that line segment O M equals to O N that is capital R plus N M that is small r. The distance O M in proportion equals to capital R plus small r that is actually the addition of the two radii with each other. So whenever we have an external match between two circles, like in this drawing, the straight line that connects the centers together, in this case is OM, must pass from the touching point, that is point N, or O and M is one straight line, and the distance OM between uh, the uh, centers will be equal to the addition of the two RDI with each other, that is to say capital R plus small r. So we can implement uh, the two new words in our drawing. So here we have This circle have an external match with this semicircle at point edge. That is to say, they are touching each other externally at point edge. And therefore, the straight line that connects their centers together is FB, because B is the center of this semicircle and F is the center of this circle. So the straight line FB must pass point H, that is to say FHB is one straight line. FHB is one straight line. And the distance FH, uh, the distance FB between the RDI will be equal to the addition of the two RDI with each other. Here F edge is the radius of this circle that is equal to small r according to our definition. And edge B is the radius of this semicircle that is equal to 70 units. Okay, so B edge equal to 70. So in total B edge or BF 
is 97 bf equals to 70 plus r units. Okay, bf equals to 70 plus r units, so I'm writing down. Likewise, this circle and this semicircle have an external notch between them at this point, point G. That is to say, the dot finish on the external is point G. And therefore, according to all number 11, the side 9 that connects their centers together, that is to say, FD must pass for point G, that is to say, FGD is one side line. distance between the centers is FD that is equal to the addition of the two on the I with each other. The radius of the small circle is close to small R and the radius of the small semicircle is close to 35. And you can see from the domain that FD equals to R, uh, 35 plus R. So I can write down that FD equals to 35 plus R units. This semicircle have an external notch to this polar semicircle at point C. That is to say, we are touching each other externally at point C. And therefore, according to rule number 11, if the center of this semicircle is here at point B and the center of the smaller semicircle is here at point D. So the straight line that connects their centers together is BD, and according to rule number 11, the side line BD must pass for their touching point, that is to say, for point uh, C. That is to say, BCD is one side line. BCD is one side line. And what is the distance between their centers? The distance between their centers is BD. And BD, according to rule number 11, must be equal to the addition of the two on the eye with each other. The radius of this semicircle is. 35 plus 45 is 70 units plus the radius of this uh, smallest semicircle is 35 units. So 70 plus 35 is the distance between the centers BD. <coughs> so I found out that BD equals to 70 plus 35, that is 105. Units. BD equals to 105 units in its length. This circle has an internal notch with the biggest semicircle at point I. First of all, this uh, the small circle, this small circle. Uh, is located inside the biggest semicircle and so they are touching each other internally at point I and therefore according to all and the center of this circle is here at point F and the center of the biggest semicircle is here at point, is here at point O so according to all number 10 The straight line that connects their centers together, that is to say OF, must pass through their touching point, that is actually point I. Or OFI is one straight line. OFI is one
cos and i. And what is the distance between the ensembles? The distance between the ensembles is FO. And according to rule number 10, the distance between the ensembles FO must be equal to the difference between the radii. The radius of the biggest semicircle equals to capital R. The radius of this circle equals to small r. So if we put it further, that FO equals to capital R minus small r. So FO equals to capital R is 105 units. According to what we already found out, minus r. r is the radius of the circle that we are looking for. So if we put it further, that FO equals to 105 minus R units. Again, R is the radius that we are looking for in this question. Here, IF is the radius of this circle that is equal to small R, or I is the radius of the biggest semicircle that is equal to other five units. And therefore, FO equals to OI minus IF. OI is under 5, IF is R. Therefore, FO is equals to under 5 minus R units. Okay. In the next step, I will present to you a new rule and we will implement a new rule in our drawings. We we'll implement a new rule in triangle FBD. Repeat again, we we'll implement the new rule in the green triangle, triangle FBD. The new rule is called Stewart's theorem. And it is true in any triangle. Okay. So the triangle that I will draw would mean any triangle this is triangle ABC that could be any triangle The length of side AB is equal to A units. Side AC equals to B units in its length. And side BC, this side BC equals to C units in its length. In addition, we have also line segment AO. Line segment AO equals to D units in its length. BO, line segment BO equals to M units. And finally, line segment OC equals to N units in its length. Then, according to Stewart's theorem, in this triangle, triangle ABC, it could be any triangle. The following equation is true. A square times N 
plus b square times m equals to c and we will open the brackets inside the brackets we have here a d square plus m times n so I repeat again turn into steamer theorem in any triangle a square times n plus b square times m equals to c open the brackets here inside the brackets we have d square plus m times n we will close the brackets so we can actually implement the new wall in our green triangle this triangle triangle bft so I copy triangle the green triangle bft in your page and you will implement on it Steven Sermon. We have already found out that Fb equals to 70 plus R units. Sign Fd equals to 35 plus R units. Sign Vd equals to other 5 units. Next step. And line segment FO equals to 105 minus R units in its name. This line segment PO equals to 35 units in its name. Finally, line segment OD equals to 35 plus 35, that is 70 units in its length. So this is actually triangle FPD, the green triangle that I copied from the original drawing. And the next step we will implement on this triangle, triangle FPD, Stewart's theorem. So according to Stewart's theorem, in this triangle, triangle FPD, We get that FB square times OD plus FD square times BO
equals to BD and then we will open brackets inside the brackets we will have FO square plus BO times OD BO times OD here in close brackets so this equation is the implementation of C1 C1 in our triangle, triangle FPD. Here I repeat again, FB squared times OD plus FD squared times BO equals to BD. We open the brackets, inside the brackets we have FO squared plus BO times OD. So FB equals to 70 plus R. So, so, so Therefore, FB squared plus 70 plus R squared times OD. OD equals to 70 units, so it's something to OD by 70. Plus BO is 35 units. And OD is 70 units. Okay. So, I made a mistake here. FP square is 70 plus R units squared times OD. OD is 70. So we substitute OD by 70 plus FO square. FO square is 35 plus R square. times BO. BO is 35, so we substitute the BO by 35 and it is equal to BD. BD is 105, so we substitute BD by 105. Inside the bucket we have FO square. FO is 105 minus R, therefore FO square is 105 minus R square plus BO is 35 times OD is 70 okay repeat again 70 plus R square times 70 plus 35 plus R square times 35 equals to 105 inside the brackets we have 105 plus R square plus 35 times 70 okay in the next step, we will define the number 35 as x and we we'll substitute in this equation the number 35 or any multiplication of 35 by natural number by x. And we will get that. Here we have 70 plus R square seventy is two times thirty-five, so therefore it is two X. Okay. X equals to thirty-five. So seventy is two X plus R square times, times 70 70 is 2x plus 35 plus R square 35 is x so we have here x plus R square 
times 55 is x, so I substitute 55 by x. And it is equal, on the other side of the equation we have added 5. Added 5 is 3 times 35, that is to say it is 3x. We'll open the bracket. Inside the bracket we have again added 5, that is 3x. Minus r square plus 35 is x and 70 is 2x. And close brackets. So, actually, this is. Uh, our expression after we substitute x by 35. In the next step, we divide this expression by x, and we get that you know, x will get cancelled, you also x will get cancelled. And you also x will get cancelled. So what is that from this equation after we cancel x? In this side of the equation we have 2 times 2x plus r square plus x plus r square equals to 3 inside the buckets we have 3x minus r square plus x times 2x is 2x square here we close the buckets. In the next step, we open the buckets here. We have here 2 times 2x plus r square equals to 2x square. That is 4x square plus r square plus 2 times 2xr is 4xr. Or multiplied by 2 plus x plus r square is x square plus r square plus 2xr. And it is equal on the other side of the equation we have 3 inside the bracket we have 3x minus r square according to the algebraic identity that a minus b square equals to a square plus b square minus 2 times a b, we get that 3x minus r square equals to 3x square, that is 9x square plus r square minus 2 times 3xr is minus 6xr plus 2x square, all under the brackets. Okay. Here again, we'll open the brackets and we'll get that two times four x square is eight x square plus two times r square is two r square plus two times four x r is eight x r plus x square plus r square plus 2xr equals to 3 inside the bracket we have 9x square plus 2x square is 11x square plus r square minus 6xr okay. so in this side of the equation we have 8x square plus 
x square is 9 x square Here, uh, in this side of the equation, we have also 2 r square plus r square is 3 r square. And we have also 8 xr plus 2 xr is 10 xr. So in total, in this side of the equation, we have 9 x square plus 3 r square plus 2 plus uh, 10 xr. equals to, on the other side of the equation, we'll open the brackets, and we get that 3 times 11 x squared is 33 x squared, plus 3 times r squared is 3 r squared, and 3 times minus 6 x r is minus 18 x r. Okay, so here we have three x r on both sides of the equation. So three, three uh, we have three r square on both sides of the equation. So three r square will get cancelled. What is left of this equation after we cancel three r square? In this side of the equation, we have nine x square plus ten x r equals to 33x squared minus 18xr. Here we will add 18xr to this equation and we get that uh, first of all, okay, we we'll add 18xr to this equation and we we'll get that 9x squared plus 8xr plus 18xr is 28xr that is equal to 33x squared 18xr minus 18xr is 0 so in this of the, of the equation we left only with uh, 33x squared that is equal to 9x squared plus 28xr here we subtract from this equation 9x squared and we will get that 9x squared minus 9x squared is 0. So in this of the, of the equation we left only with 28xr. And here we have 33x squared minus 9x squared is 24x squared. So, in conclusion, we found out that 28xr equals to 24x squared. Here we will divide this equation by x, and we get that 28xr over x is 28r, that is equal to 24x squared over x is 24x. So in conclusion for now, the 28R equals to 24X. Here, we, sub, uh, we substitute X by 35. X equals to 35 according to our definition. So we get the 28R equals to 24X. And X is 35, so we substitute X by 35. So in conclusion for now, the 28R equals to 24 times 35. Here we divide this equation by 7 and we get that 28 over 7 is 4 so in total in this side of the equation we have 4r that is equal to 24 times 35 over 7 is 5 In conclusion found out that 4r equals to 24 times 5 here we divide this equation by 4 and we get that 4r over 4 is r equals to 24 over 4 is 6. So in total, in this side of the equation, we have 6 times 5. We found out that r equals to 6 times 5. 6 times 5 is 30. So r equals to 30 
units. We found out that the length of the radius of the circle, the radius that we are looking for, r of small r equals to 30 units in its length. In the next step, I will summarize the lecture. In the drawing, we have a big semicircle. Inside this big semicircle, we have two small semicircles and one circle. It is given as the equation that line segment AC equals to 140 units and line segment CE equals to 70 units. Our mission is to find out the radius of uh, this circle. So, first of all, we gave names to the relevant points. And then we defined the radius of the bigger circle as capital R, and the radius of this small circle as small r. I repeat again. Capital R is the radius of the bigger circle, and small r is the radius of the circle that we are looking for. Actually, it is given us the question that uh, line segment AE equals to 140 plus 70 units. Repeat again. AE equals to 140 plus 70 units, that is 210 units. So AE equals to 210 units. But what is actually AE? AE is the diameter of this uh, semicircle, of the diameter of the biggest semicircle. And uh, the diameter of any circle or semicircle is twice as long as the radius. So here you can find out that the diameter AE is the diameter, and the diameter equals to two times the radius. And we only found out that AE equals to 210 units. So from this equation, we will conclude that 2R equals to 210 units. We divided this equation by 2. And we found out that capital R, the radius of the biggest semicircle, equals to 210 over 2 is 105 units. Okay. So here. The radius of the big semicircle AO equals 205 units, and the radius OE of the biggest semicircle equals 205 units. Then, it is given as the question that AC equals 240 units, but AC is the diameter of this semicircle, therefore the radius must be equal to half of it. That is to say, the radius must be equal to 140 over 2, that is 70 units. So the radius AB equals to 70 units and the radius BC equals to 70 units. Likewise, it is given us the question that line segment CE equals to 70 units in its length, but CE is also the diameter of this, uh, the small semicircle. And if the diameter CE equals to 70, it means that the radius CD equals to 35. And the and the equals to 70 over 2, that is 35 units. In the next step, we found out the length of line segment BO. From the drawing, it is very easy to see that BO equals to OA minus BA. BO or OB equals to OA minus BA. <coughs> OA is the radius of the biggest semicircle that is equal to 105 units. AB is the radius of this semicircle that is equal to 70 units. So in conclusion, we found out that OB equals to 105 minus 70, that is 35 units. So OB equals to 35 units. 
uh, of big cost of 35 stories. And the next step from all the left of this line segment, line segment all C. From the domains it's very easy to see that all C equals to O E minus C E. Repeat again. O C equals to O E minus C E. O E equals to 105 units, it is the radius of the Riga semicircle, and C E equals to 70 units according to what is given in the question. So in conclusion we found out that O C equals to 105 minus 70, that is 35 units. So O C equals to 35 units in its length. In the next step I presented to you two new rules and we implemented the two new rules in our drawing. We have rule number 10. According to rule number 10, if two circles are touching each other internally, here, because of the fact that the small circle is located inside the big circle, we will uh, we'll say that the two circles are touching each other internally at point N. Point N is the touching point of the point of tendency between them. So, if two circles are touching each other internally, like in this problem, then the straight line that connects their centers together, point O is the center of the big circle, point M is the center of the small circle, and the straight line that connects their centers together is the straight line OM. This straight line OM must pass through their touching point, that is to say, for point N. Or OMN is one straight line. Again, OMN is one straight line. And what is the distance between their centers? The distance between their centers is OM. But what is the length of OM? From the drawings, it's very easy to see that OM equals to NO minus NM. NO is capital R, NM is small r. Therefore, OM equals to capital R minus small r. So, whenever you have an internal knot between two circles, like in this drawing, then the distance between their centers will be equal to the difference between the radii. In this uh, specific uh, case, is capital R minus small r. So OM or MO equals to capital R minus small r. Then we have also all number 11. According to all number 11, if two circles are touching each other externally. Here, yeah, because of the fact that none of those two circles are located inside the other one, we say that those two circles are touching each other externally at point N. Okay? Then, the straight line that connects the circles together is OM. Why? Because O is the center of the big circle and M is the center of the small circle. So this straight line OM must pass through the attaching point, that is actually point N. Okay, or O and M is one straight line. And what is the distance between the centers OM? OM equals to capital R plus small r. Or OM equals to OM plus NM, that is actually capital OM equals to capital R and M. And NM equals to small r. In conclusion, we found out that OM equals to capital R plus small r. Oh. Whenever you have an external match between two circles, like in this moment, then the straight line OM that connects their centers together must pass through their touching point. This is to say for point N, or O and M is one straight line. And the distance OM between the centers will be equal to the addition of the two one the I with each other. In this case, it is capital R. OM equals to capital R plus small r. We actually implemented the two new rules in our drawing. The center of this service again is at point B. And the center of this circle is here at point F. 
This circle and semicircle have an external amount between them at point L. That is to say they are not in each other externally at point H. Therefore, according to rule number 11, the straight line that connects the observers together, that is to say FB, must pass for the touching point, that is to say for, for, for point H. Or FHB is one straight line, and the distance between all the, the, uh, uh, the distance between the centers FB will be equal to the addition of the two on the eye with each other. The radius of this circle is R. The radius of this circle is 70, and the addition of the two on the eye with each other will give us R plus 70 units. So FB equals to R plus 70 units, or 70 units plus R. 70 plus R units, then we have the center of this small, uh, small circle, small semicircle is here at point D. The center of this circle is here at point F. Those two circle and semicircle have an external line between them at point G. That is to say they are touching each other externally at point G. And therefore, the straight line that connects their centers together FD must pass for point G. That is to say FGD is one side line. And the distance between the centers FG must be equal to the addition of the two on the eye with each other. The radius of this second is small r, the radius of this second is 45 units. Therefore, the addition of the two on the eye with each other FD equals to 35 plus r units. FD equals to 35 plus r units. Then, this circle and this semicircle, this, those two semicircles have a, a, an external line between them at point C. That is to say, they are touching each other externally at point C. And therefore, according to rule number 11, the straight line that connects the centers together, that is to say, BD, must pass for point C. Or BCD is one straight line. And what is the distance BD between the centers? Will be equal to the addition of the two on the eye with each other. The radius of this uh, semicircle is 35 plus 45 is 70. The radius of uh, the smallest semicircle is 35 units. And the addition of the two on the eye with each other is 70 plus uh, 30, uh, 35, that is 105 units. So BD equals to 105 units. Here yeah, BD equals to 105 units. Then this circle, this small circle, is located inside the biggest semicircle. And therefore, we have a determinant notch between them and this point, point I. That is to say, they are touching each other internally at point I. And according to rule number 10, whenever you have a determinant notch between two circles or semicircles, the straight line that connects their centers together must pass for their touching point. The center of this circle is here at point F. The center of the biggest semicircle is here at point O. And the straight line that connects the centers together is O, F, O. So this straight line O, F, O, F, O, O, F must pass for the attaching point. The attaching point is I. And therefore O, F, I is one straight line. And what is the distance between the centers? The distance between the centers FO, the distance FO equals to the difference between the R and the I. The radius of the biggest semicircle is capital R. The radius of this circle is R. And the difference between the R and the I is capital R minus small r. Repeat again. The distance between the centers FO equals to capital R minus small r according to rule number 10. Capital R, the radius of the biggest semicircle equals to 105 units, and therefore in total FO equals to 105 for small r units. Yeah. FO equals to 105 for r units. In the next step, I present it to you a new rule, and we implemented the new rule in the green triangle, the triangle FBD. The new rule 
is the new one is called Stevenson and it is true in any triangle. So this triangle triangle ABC could be any triangle. In this triangle triangle ABC, side AB equals to units, side AC equals to units in its length, and finally side BC equals to C units in its length. In addition, we know that line segment AO equals to D units in its length, line segment BO equals to M units, and line segment OC equals to N units in its length. Then, according to Stewart's theorem, the following equation is true A squared times N plus B squared times M equals to C. We open brackets, inside the brackets we have d square plus m times n. Okay, and this equation is true in any triangle. So we can implement the new rule in our triangle, triangle FBD. So I copied triangle FBD in this new page and we implemented the new rule in our triangle, triangle FBD. This is the green tiger from the original drawing. BO is equal to 35 units and OD equals to 35 plus 35, that is to say 70 units. OD equals to 70 units. And we already found out all the sides of this tiger. We also found out that FO equals to 105 points R units. We implemented here the Stimmel theorem. According to Stimmel theorem, we get that FB squared times OD plus FD squared times BO equals to BD. We open the brackets. Inside the brackets we have FO squared plus BO times OD. Okay. FB equals to 70 plus R, therefore FB square equals to 70 plus R square times OD. OD is 70, so we substitute OD by 70. FD is 35, minus R, uh, 35 plus R, therefore FD square is 35 plus R square times BO. BO is 35, so we substitute BO by 35. And it is equal on the other side of the equation we have BD, BD is other 5, so we substitute BD by other 5. We open the brackets here, inside the brackets we have FO square. FO is other 5 minus R, therefore O square is other 5 minus R square. Plus, uh, plus BO is 35 and OD is 70. Okay. Again, this equation is the implementation of Stevens theorem in our triangle, triangle FBD. Then we define 35 as x, and we substitute 35, or any multiplication of 35 by an actual number, by x. Okay? And we found out that. Uh, 70 is 2 times 35, that is to say it is 2x plus r square equals to 70 is 2x plus 35 plus r square is x plus r square times 35 is x. 105 is 3 times 35, that is to say it is 3x. Inside the bucket we have 105 minus r square, that is 3x minus r square plus 35 is x and 70 is 2x. Okay, so we have this uh, equation after we substitute 35 by x. Here we divided this equation by x and we got this equation after we divided the equation by x, by x. Okay, 2 times 2x plus, plus r squared plus x plus r squared equals to 3 
inside the brackets we have 3x minus r squared plus 2x squared. Here we open the brackets. We have here 2 times 2x plus r squared equals to 2x squared, that is 4x squared, plus r squared, plus 2 times 2xr is 4xr, plus x plus r squared is x squared plus r squared plus 2xr. And it is equal, on the other side of the equation we have 3, inside the brackets we have 3x minus r squared. According to the algebraic identity that a minus b squared equals to a squared plus b squared minus 2 times a b, we get that uh, 3x minus r squared equals to 3x squared, this is 9x squared, plus r squared, minus 2 times 3xr is minus 6xr plus 2x squared. Then, we open the markets here. So here we have 2 times 4x squared is 8x squared. 2 times r squared is 2 r squared. And 2 times 4xr is 8xr plus x squared plus r squared plus 2xr. Here inside the markets we have, it is 3. Inside the markets we have 9x squared plus 2x squared is 11x squared. Uh, plus r square minus 6xr. So in this end of the equation we have 8x square plus x square is 9x square, 2r square plus r square is 3r square, and 10xr plus 2xr, 8xr plus 2xr is 10xr. So in total in this end of the equation we have 9x square plus 3r square plus 10xr equals to, on the other side of the equation, we open the markets and we got that 3 times 11x squared is 33x squared, 3 times r squared is 3r squared, 3 times minus 6xr is minus 18xr. So here we have 3r squared on both sides of the equation, so 3r squared will get cancelled. And what is left from this equation after we cancel 3r squared? We have in this side of the equation we have 9x squared plus 10xr equals to 33x squared minus 18xr. Here, we added 18xr to this equation and we found out that 9x squared plus 10x, 9x, so in this side of the equation we have 9x squared uh, plus 10xr. 10xr plus 18xr is 28xr. In the other side of the equation we have 33x squared and 18xr minus 18xr is 0. So in conclusion, we found out that 9x squared plus 28xr equals to 33x squared. Here we subtracted 9x squared from this equation and found out here that 9x squared minus 9x squared is 0. So in this side of the equation, we left only with 28xr. In the other side of the equation, we have 33x squared minus 9x squared is 24 x squared. So in conclusion we found out that 28xr equals to 24x squared. Here we divided this equation by x and found out that 28xr over x is 28r and 24x squared over x is 24x. So in conclusion we found out that 28r equals to 24x. Here we substitute x by 35 and found out that 28r equals to 24 times x and x is 35. So in conclusion we found out that 28r equals to 24 times 35. Here we divided this equation by 7 and found out that 28 over 7 is 4. So in total on this side of the equation we have 4r. And here we have on the other side of the equation we have 24 times 35 over 7 is 5. So in total, in this side of the equation, we have 24 times 5. Well, 4r equals to 24 times 5. Here we divided this equation by 4 and found out that 4r over 4 is r and 24 over 4 is 6. So in total, in this side of the equation, we have 6 times 5. So we found out that r equals to 6 times 5. 6 times 5 is 30. So in conclusion, we found out that r the radius of this small circle, the radius that we are looking for, is equal to 30 units in its length. Okay, thank you very much.